comes. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Mia Roy. Amen, amen. Um, God has no word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you to God for another Sunday. We thank you to God for another time to gather together in your name, oh to God. Lord, I pray for every single individual in this place, oh to God, that you meet every need. Oh to God, every heavy heart, oh to God, that you will lift, oh to God, every broken spirit, you will piece back together. Yes, Father. Every um, person who is here who needs to be fed, Father, you said that when we hunger and when we thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled. That's your word. So, Lord, I thank you on this morning that you will yes, fill God. us, oh to God. Fill us, oh God. Fill us with your righteousness. Fill us with what you want us to know. Fill us with what you want us to hear. Yes, God. We give you all the praise for you're worthy of all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So today, our scripture um, is a two-part one. It's not long. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, we will be coming from John chapter 16, verses 18 through 22. Um, the version I'm using is the New American Standard Version. Um, when you have it, you may stand to your feet. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, babe. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. No, you don't press anymore. Just click it. Amen. Amen. Um, chapter, verse 18. So they were saying, what is this that he says a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to question him, and he said to them, are you deliberating together about this? That I said a little while and you're not going to see me, and again in a little while you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and you will mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one is going to take away your joy from you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Looking only at Jesus, yep. the wow. author and the finisher, the originator and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility by sinners, against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. 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 His words already blessed. Amen. Amen. Back in college, I used to watch this show called The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, back in college. For those y'all who are unfamiliar with the Real Housewives series, the Real Housewives series is, a, um, is when they go around and they film different women who are of means in this world and um, you know they, they, they film their day-to-day -day lives which we know is not a day-to-day -day life they give them a little bit of a script um, eventually there's a little bit of drama eventually there's some fights between them uh -huh. eventually there's some cattiness or rudeness that evokes the attention span of the consumer and, and boosts up their ratings but there was this one woman on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and her name was Nene Leakes Nene was one of the ladies who had tenure on this show, and she was a fan favorite. She also, during her time, her fame had caused her to be a guest, to, uh, have a guest appearance on another TV show called The Apprentice. And for those of y'all who are unfamiliar with The Apprentice, that was a show by Mr. Trump who, who, who would give them job things and give them little hurdles to jump over, and um, if they did poorly, he said, you're fired. Uh. At the end of the episode, and whoever was the winner, finally they were hired. <laughs> so Nene had been on this show, and had done fairly well, she was not hired. And she would later go on to brag on national television how she had a Trump check, and that was inferring that the money being made from that show put her hefty bank, a bank account into an even better position. Wow. However, Nene would go through different things on the show. And later on, she would confess to the audience that she was trying to find her happy. She admitted that she lost her happy somewhere and she was battling to get it back. She was battling with this little spout of depression and even though Nene had status, she was gathering fame, she even had a very large check from a very wealthy businessman, none of these things had the power to keep her in the position of happiness. That's good, Neil. In today's text, we glimpse at a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples from um, chapters 13 to 17 of John, he's talking with them. 
He, he, he gathered them around for Passover and he's conversing with them. He, he washed their feet. He broke bread with them. And in the latter portion of chapter 13, Jesus finally announces to them, one of y'all is going to betray me. Mm. One of y'all. Wow. So one by one, you hear this echoing question, Master, is it I? Yeah. Jesus, you know, I'm the one who's going to betray you? Is it me? Is it me, Lord? Finally, Jesus looks at Judas and tells him to go about his business. Mm. And whatever he needs to do. Do it quickly. Do it quickly. Yes, God Almighty. You know, at this moment, Jesus' earthly life begins to domino towards his finale. Mm. But Jesus does not despair. He does not sulk in the solemnness of this moment, even though he knows what's ahead of him. He doesn't bemoan or labor the fact that somebody has betrayed him. Yes, ma'am. Right. Instead, he takes these final moments to comfort and converse wow. with his disciples. Wow. For these were the ones who, after he left the scene of earth and went on to heaven, who will continue his work and spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. These were the disciples who didn't 100% understand what he was saying. And when they finally got it, they didn't understand why he was saying it. But Jesus still took the time yes, to talk with them. Yes, ma'am. To comfort them. To let them know what's going to happen. And what amazed me about this moment is that Jesus is, a, is in the process of being betrayed by somebody he loves, mm -hmm. somebody he's invested into, somebody who he, he, he's, he, he's, he's, he's pulled along the side with them and poured his life into theirs. But he doesn't focus on him. Mm -hmm. He focuses on those who are still around him in this moment. He chooses to minister to those who did not betray him. Good God Almighty. Even though they were eventually scattered, when he went from judgment hall to judgment hall, he knows that they are not going to stay with him, but he still chooses this moment to comfort them, to let them know you aren't alone. Yes, ma'am. How often do we focus on those who hurt us? How often do we focus on situations that cripple us? How often do we focus on the things that, that leave us battered and scarred? How mm -hmm. often do we focus on the things that have brought us to our knees? How often do we put our attention on those moments that while, yes, they are hurting, and yes, they have caused some pain, and yes, they, they, they have wounded us, how often do we keep our focus yes, and our attention onto that? Good See, teaching. Jesus taught us in this moment what to do in those moments, to focus on what's around you. Mm. Right. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, now looking unto him. Yeah. And the New American Standard Version says, looking only, Ooh. only, mm. only. I love it, yeah. man. Only to Jesus, yeah. who is the author and the finisher of Come your on. faith, who yeah. is the originator and the completer of your faith. So in this moment, Jesus does, it shows us the pattern for when we are hurt and we are wounded and, and life is taking away our happiness. Mm. When we can't find our happiness, he lets us know what to do. And so there's an art to the virtue of joy. Mm. The art of joy is understanding that Jesus does not leave us lonely in our darkest moments. Mm. Our world can feel like it's crumbling apart. Our dark moments are ununderstandable. We may not know what's going on. We may have misconceptualized the plan of God, thinking it's the only way, but only to find out he chose another path, another route, another matter. Mm. But there's one thing that we can be certain of. After chapter 13, Jesus starts to minister to them and give them a sermon upon sermon. In chapter 14 of uh, John, in verse 18, he tells us that, he won't leave us orphans. Right. Right. I'm about to go, but you won't be left as orphans. Right. I'm about to leave the scene. I'm about to go through some excruciating things, but I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, Lord. He said that I will come to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That even in moments when you don't see me anymore, then you can't feel my presence, and you don't know what to do, I'm going to come to yes, you. Yes, ma'am. See, Jesus promised that he will comfort you. So Jesus does not leave us in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our discomfort, and in the midst of our confusion. See, the disciples had Jesus all along with them. Right. In his fleshly state. They had Jesus there explaining to them what's going to happen, and they were still confused. Hmm. <laughs> they still didn't get it. Right. If this wasn't the first time that Jesus tried to prepare them that he right. was leaving, he, over and over again, through the three years that he was with them, he said, I'm going to leave. Right. Yes. I'm going to die, but in three days, I'm going to rise again. Right. I'm going to leave. I have to fulfill my father's plan, but I'm going to rise again. I'm going to die, but I will live again. And they still didn't get it. Wow. They still didn't understand. And the which lets me know that in the midst of my confusion, mm. my mind. 
in the midst of things that I don't all the way understand what God is doing in my life, he still has patience with me. And the midst of the things that I'm troubled with, and even God might have whispered to me to do something, and I still, I find myself in a situation to where, okay, Lord, you led me here, now what? Did you leave me here? Did I get it wrong? And I'm asking all these questions. We may ask all these questions in our minds of, Lord, what are we doing here? But then I remember what the disciples did. They didn't get it. And I remember how Jesus chose to respond. He chose to minister to them again. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Even in his darkest moment, he ministered to them again. He ministered again. See, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. Yes, ma'am. Jesus continues it. talking to his disciples, and he's just, he continues his sermon by stressing the importance of staying connected to them. Because he said, y'all are the vi I'm branches, but I'm the vine. If you abide in me, yeah. I'll abide in you. Yeah. See, this is a relationship. If you disconnect yourself, I can't live in you. Mm. So you have to be inside of me. And he emphasizes that y'all are chosen. Mm. Yeah. You are chosen by me. Right. You are chosen by me. You are chosen by me. You are chosen yeah, by me. Yeah. You are chosen by me. He chose to emphasize that in this moment that when you stay connected to me, you will have life. Preach. And then he finished his part by saying that these things I'm speaking to you, that my joy. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. My joy. Yeah. I love it, man. My joy. My joy. Thank you. Because I'm everlasting life. Yes. My joy. My joy. Because I'm the well where there is water that you will never thirst again. My joy. My joy. Because I am yesterday, today, and tomorrow. My joy. His joy. Will be living on the inside of you. And then your joy will be full. Yeah. He warns them that the world will hate him, them. Yes, yes, yes. He also said the world hated me first. Right. He said, I'm leaving you so that the Holy Spirit can come and he can be a helper to you. See, if I stay on the scene, the Holy Spirit can't complete what he needs to complete. Mm -hmm. See, the art of joy reveals to us that in this moment, that staying connected to Jesus is important for more than a few reasons. I don't have time to discuss the importance of staying in Jesus, at least not all of them. So I'm just going to highlight what's in this text. So we are to stay connected to Jesus because when we are living with Jesus, he's living back inside of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's his joy that's living and breathing and moving. See, the art of joy understands that, that, that the picture is complete when I'm inside of him. Mm. Mm, that's good news. When I'm not relying on my own happiness. When I'm not resting on what makes me smile. Right. Mm. When I, I, I'm not uh, holding the hand of, 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 of what makes my emotions all giddy and what makes my stomach all bubbly and what puts me into a positive mentality. Come on. The art of joy understands that staying connected to Jesus. Right, right, right. It's essential for our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. Staying connected to up. Jesus yeah. is essential because when I have his joy yeah. on the side of me, only then can my joy be full. Preach. Right. Good God Almighty. God, I think. His joy equals my joy being full. Hmm. His joy is a cup that won't ever run out. Ah. Won't ever be depleted. Won't ever go through a drought. Mm. Don't want to ever experience a dry season. Come on. Won't ever experience a moment or a, a mindset of, I just don't feel like Come on. going into you today. Wow. Thank you, That's Jesus. Good, man. Ooh, man. His, joy His joy persists through the darkest moments. Mm. His joy pours into a cup, even though he, he, he's bleeding to fill up his cup. Mm. His joy. So we are to rely on the art of joy and the understanding that Christ is the reason why we continue to smile. See, your happiness is based on your emotions. Mm. And your emotions are tossed and turned by the events that come into your life. Yes, ma'am. Because yes, when someone dies, we grieve. It's hard to be happy when we're grieving. Yes, ma'am. When I'm in pain, it's hard for me to smile because my side is killing me. When my back is aching, when my head is pounding, it's hard for me to do a little bit of this. I, I do a fake smile with my kids when I'm kind of like, I'm pleased with them. I go, <laughs> so you know that this smile ain't real. And they tell me all the time, it looks a little scary, but baby, your attitude isn't scaring me. So let's get into both of us fix the situation. So with that being said, that your, your emotions are going to be pulled, it's going to be turned, it's right. going to be tossed. Jesus even says it here in this text. He says that you're going to grieve. 
and the world is going to rejoice. Right, come on. He even lets you know that you're going to experience some emotion, but at the end of the text, he lets you know that your joy is going to be a joy that can't be robbed because it's rooted in me. Yes. Mm. Nehemiah 8 and 10 informs us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. See, my strength comes from his joy. I, I'm weak when he is strong. So I know that when I, I am weak and I'm feeling feeble, all I have to do is lie, rely, and lie into his joy. Amen. Father, I need you to take over right yes, now. Yes, Lord. Yes, I need you. Yes, yes. Jesus, I need you to intervene in the situation. Yes, my God. emotions can't handle what's going on. <laughs> Father, you said that your joy is my strength. And because I am weak, you told me to say that I'm strong, but I'm only strong when I'm relying in you. So, Father, in this moment, I'm relying in yes. you. Yeah. Yes. Strengthen me. Strengthen me, Lord. My joy is full when his joy is inside of me. Our pursuit should be in Jesus and the mission he assigned to us by our father. See, I have an Uncle Cephas. He's my granddad, my granddaddy's um, brother. I'm Uncle Cephas, we don't let him talk too much at the funerals. <laughs> <laughs> because Uncle Cephas always starts off with the same thing. He tells every any family member, any friend, and any foe, uh, any foe that he is as loose as a goose. <laughs> he says that every single time, y'all know that all my screws are not screwed in tightly. And he reminds us to not mess with him because he doesn't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and see, when we are as loose as a goose, yeah. when it comes to Jesus and the work that he's assigned to Come us, on. joy eludes us, it escapes us, and we can't seem to get a good grip on it. It, it passes through the word of God, our yeah. hands. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 informs us, for consider him who has endured such hostility. Come on. By sinners against himself. Right. So that you won't grow weary and lose heart. We have to cling, cl cling tightly to Jesus because the world won't like us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We Amen. have to cling tightly to Jesus because this world will not like us. That's good, man. They won't come for us. They won't understand us. It's because they didn't understand Jesus first. Come on. And so, just as Jesus in that moment didn't focus on Judas, Judas the betrayer, he focused on Matthew and Peter and James and John and Thaddeus and Nathaniel. He Thank saw God. all these Thank people who were still in his, in his vicinity. He focused on what was Come in on. front of them. Yes, yes. The Bible tells us, train our eyes, our sight on Jesus. Right, fix, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fix your eyesight on Jesus. Yeah. I love it, man. Because the thing is, in the middle of my, a race, I don't race because, you know, I'm going to lose. But in the middle of a race, or in the middle of running, I, I, I sometimes want to give up. I want to give up because my, long, my lungs are burning. Yes, ma'am. My feet start getting heavy. Yes, ma'am. You know, I started shaking. I already move slow, but then my soul becomes so much more slower. <laughs> but Jesus is right there on the other side of the track saying, you can do this. Yes. You can make this. Yes. Keep going. Keep going. Keep pushing. Yeah. I know it's hard. I know you feel those lungs burning. Keep pushing. Yeah. I know that those legs feel like him and out, but you got it. You got more strength than you that you realize. Come on. Continue. Listen to my voice. Come on. Focus on me. Yeah. Stay tuned to what I have to say to you. Don't don't be distracted. Don't know. Don't focus on your breathing. Focus on me. And when we start focusing on that encouragement, mm. wow. When we start focusing on what's there in that moment, when we start training our eyes to pay attention to that in my darkest moment, that Jesus is right there rooting for me to win, to succeed. Yeah. I start shifting my gaze from what is painful. Right. Yeah. The auditor reminds us that not only will do we not have to throw in the towel when adversity hits our life, but that we are in good company. <laughs> Jesus was despised by people on the inside mm -hmm. and the outside of the church. Right? Yes. He was set up by the Jews, but he was God. crucified by Rome. He faced pressure from those who supported him, yet misunderstood his mission. Mm -hmm. He was rejected by his own people. Yes. His own knew him not. Yes. But even in the midst of this all, there was a joy set before him. Come on. Now back to our text. We are in John chapter 16 of B clause of verse 20. He tells his disciples, you will grieve, but your grief will be turned. It's going to shift. Yeah. And I don't stay like that all the time. It seems permanent in this moment because it's the only thing that you are surrounded with that you can't go off with. But it's going to turn into joy. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish 
because of the joy mm. that a child has been born into the world. Yes, ma'am. Therefore, you too, having grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. And no one is going to take that joy away from you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. See, even though Jesus was about to be put to the most excruciating moment known to mankind, he set his sight past the cross. Uh. However, so often when we are going through, our, our gaze is fixated on the cross. Right. Only on that moment of pain. Jesus says that, yes, there will be pain, but on the other side of this pain is life. Yes. For everyone. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. But when we are going through, at times, sometimes we see, oh, there is pain. But like Jesus, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, who set the example for us, he lets us know that on the other side of that pain yeah. Thank is you, life. God. Come on. Thank you. That I, I didn't allow this into your life for no reason. It's a ministering tool. You're going to grow from this. Yeah. You're going to heal from this. That this moment is temporary. That yes, you're grieving now. But there's a point after this moment. So although Jesus was about to be put through this excruciating moment, he's still fixated past the cross. Yes, because when we commit to Jesus... We understand that the joy is on the other side of the cross. And as a woman, when we give birth, we may be nervous about the pain our body is going to feel. Maybe. Just maybe. We may dread the labor. We may scream and shout. But our focus is that life is about to be birthed from this pain. Yes, ma'am. The pain in that moment seems like an eternity. That's good, man. I heard, I heard. And we may question why we are going through this because it's an involuntary moment. Hmm. That's set upon our life. Work the tech, man. Work it. But pain is coursing through our bodies. We still have to push. Mm. I'm in the most painful part of my body, but I still have to push. push. Yeah. If I stop pushing, life won't be handled. If I decide that, oh, I'm tired, I give up. The life that's on the inside of me won't come out. Mm. See, life hangs in the balance of pushing Woo! through that pain. Tell the story, Mia. Life hangs in the balance of pushing past. That's, That's good. That's good. Life That's good. That's good. Life is birthed out of pain. That's good. Life hangs in the balance of pushing through. Yeah. So Jesus had to push through. See, the art of joy reminds us that our pain is not only temporary, but it's also a gateway for God to be glorified. Mm. Yeah. See, our growth happens when we graduate from faith to faith. When we, what we go through is not for nothing. Our labor is not in vain. Our moments of darkness or sort of the light of Christ can persevere and pierce through all these dark moments. Mm. These trials and tribulations are so that deliverance can take place, so that life can be birthed and that God can get the victory over Satan. Amen. But it takes us first pushing past the pain. That's good. Mm. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, looking only at Jesus, the originator, the author, the originator, the one who started it, and perfecter. He's the one who's going to finish it of my faith. For who, for the joy that before him endured, put up with the cross, hmm. despising the shame of going through this moment of the cross, and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. See, I love what John has done in, 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 throughout his part of the gospel because he gives us a portion that we don't see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. In John chapter 17, he's recording a personal and intimate prayer of Jesus. Yeah. He talks to the Father in front of his disciples about three things. The first thing he talks to God, he said, Daddy, I thank you. Mm. I've done everything I can do. Yes, ma'am. Everything that you assigned me to do, Lord, I did it out on this earth. I did it so that you may get the glory. And in this part of the text, he's repeating glory, glory. Yeah. That my obedience was so that you may get the glory. That people may see that they have a way to you through me. That you may get the glory. Yes. Glory, glory. How he did everything he was supposed to do. So that God may get the glory. So in the moment, moments we feel like we're doing everything we're supposed to. And life is working against us. Remember that this moment is so that God can get the glory. And then continues on by praying for his disciples who's around him. He said, Father, I've kept them all. I've guarded them. Right. Except for the son of perdition. Yeah, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So that the scriptures might be fulfilled. 
I've kept them all. I've done what I've, I've, I've talked to them. I've nourished them. I've set the way. And I've been an example to them. So no, now, Father, I ask that you keep them. Mm. Yeah. And throughout this text, keep. Kept. It's being repeat. Keep them. Keep them, Father. Mm. Keep them. He asked God to keep them and that, that they may have his joy on the inside of them. And then finally, my brothers and sisters, Jesus prayed for you and me. Thank yeah. you, Lord. That's good news, man. What a blessing it is to know that death was staring Jesus at the face, in his face. But Jesus was thinking about us. Yeah. Jesus was thinking and he was yeah. praying for me and you. Thank you, Jesus. He's about to consume the vial of wrath, but he's thinking about me and you. Yeah. Amen, man. We were on his mind. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't the pain. The pain was in the back of his mind, but what was on the front of his mind, that father, there are going to be people who are going to believe on me who never saw me. They're going to choose to believe that I am the way, the truth, and the life. They never see me. Keep them. Keep them in unity. And I think it's so interesting that he doesn't just talk about keeping them. He talks about unity throughout this whole entire. Keep them together. Keep us connected inside of this body because all we have right now is each other. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God, but in flesh we have each other to encourage us. Right there. To remind us on how we handle things. See, the disciples had Jesus, but then he gave us each other. Uh, we don't good. take the place of Jesus. Right, right. But because Jesus is living in me. Right. And Jesus is living in you. We are the Jesus embodied on this earth. So when we come together, our encouragement is through each other. So we're thinking and praying for all of us. The other joy remembers that Jesus endured the cross for us. Jesus prayed for you. You weren't formed in your mother's womb yet. Hmm. You wasn't thought about. Come on. The city you were born in hadn't yet been established. <laughs> the state and the country which you now reside in had a different people and different tongues abiding in it. Wow. But Jesus saw into the future. Thank yes, you, Jesus. Yes. And pray for you from the past. Wow. And then endured or put up a cross. And the continual blessings that he's continuing to intercede for you. Yes. He's still praying for you. Yes. He's still on the right side of the Father. <laughs> he's still praying for you. That he hasn't died, given up. He's That's still good. talking to his father, Daddy. Yolanda's going through. Yeah. Uh. I can say Yolanda's more than one in here. Daddy, <laughs> Mula's going through. Cool. Daddy Peaches and Carolyn is going through. Come on. Daddy Lanise and Robin and Sister, um, oh girl, I forgot your name in this moment. Oh, bad, bad. Sister Vanessa is going through. Sister Michelle is going Come through. On. My brothers um, are going through. I have Darren and Thaddeus and Jacob and yeah. Eric and, and Alex and Ron. I have Blake and Kat. I have Come on. Regina. Come I have on. Leonard. I Come have on. Michael and Priscilla. I, I, they need some help. They have Keisha. I have JL. I have Ray Aya. Help them. Help them. He's still praying. Help us, Lord. intercessions for us on behalf of us by the Father. Thank you, Jesus. See, out of joy is confidence that the work which Jesus committed on the cross and from the grave is still rooted in the standing. Mm -hmm. That when we set our eyes on Jesus and our focus on Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus said that mm -hmm. you will have a joy that can't be robbed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have a joy that can't be robbed. Mm -hmm. No one can take this away. When you root yeah. in Jesus, no one can take this away. Wonderful word, man. Teach. That's one of my favorite songs, Hold to His Hands. Yeah. It starts the verse, starts off with, yeah. Yeah. Life yeah. is filled with swift yeah. transitions. Yes, uh -huh. Come so quickly, it will knock you off your feet and punch you in your guts. Come on. Life is filled with these moments that we're like, what just happened? Yeah. Right? But when I'm rooted in Jesus. Hey, thank you. When I'm steadfast in Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Who endured the pain of the cross. Hallelujah. Who's like, look beyond the cross and saw my pain. Yeah. And still pray for me. Thank you. Knowing that he's going to be pierced in his hands. Knowing that he's going to be pierced in his hands, but he's still pray for me. He still committed himself to yes, the cross. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I wonder in that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane. I wonder in that moment if, if, if he was feeling the future. Yeah. Mm. Wow. How people blaspheme his name. Wow. How people curse him wow. out. Yeah. How people take his name and start a war. Wow. How people take his name and rape and kill people. How people take his name and misconstrue things. I wonder if he felt the future. How mm. he's dying for people who will mess up his name. Woo. That word, Mia. Yeah. But he's still wow. 
He still chose for the past this moment. Wow. Because it's pain right now, but there's going to be somebody who's going to say yes. Yeah. There's going to be somebody who's going to represent me. So the Bible makes it clear that joy is a gift from God. Yeah. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. And it's possessed only when we root ourselves inside of Him. Yeah. The world may chase happiness and it's falling. Mm. But as a child of God, we are gifted with joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Good word. Good word. Good word. Good word.